Storm Coaster is Australia's only water coaster. Located at SeaWorld, this is a well-rounded water ride combining elements of a roller coaster, log flume, and even a dark ride. What is it better than the ride it replaced? Find out in this review of Storm. The site that holds Storm has a history of water rides. In 1980, the site was home to a set of bumper boats, but these were removed after just a few years. In 1987, the bumper boats were replaced by Lassiter's Lost Mine. This was an indoor flume ride themed to a flooding mine. This ride closed in 1993 for a year-long renovation. It would reopen in 1994's Bermuda Triangle. This ride reused the exact same ride system, but the story and visuals were changed. You still had some giant flooding sequences, but you now had a few alien encounters as well. This ride was a fan favorite. It was so popular that an exact clone was built at Movie Park Germany, which is now known as Area 51. While I never rode the version at SeaWorld, I have ridden the German version. It is a fantastic water ride. It is a long experience, and the scale of the sets is really impressive. The drops are shallow, but they're a bonus when you have a ride that's that well themed. Unfortunately, the version at SeaWorld was closed in 2010 and ultimately removed. It was replaced by a mock water coaster named Storm Coaster. This ride opened in 2013, but it had been in development for quite some time. The Gold Coast City Council received plans in January of 2008 for a water coaster towards the front of the park over near the Penguin Encounter. These were shelved, and the park instead installed the Jet Rescue Launch Straddle Coaster later that year. The water coaster plans were revived after Bermuda Triangle closed and allowed the park to reuse an existing layout. Jurors Summerland built Scatoween in 2011. I have an entire review on that attraction already published, but in short, it features a giant helix, a big drop of the bunny hill, and some free floating sections. Storm Coaster is a clone of that ride. Since I cannot find a POV of Storm that I have permission to use, you will see footage from my Scatoween one all throughout this review. Storm was a timely addition. SeaWorld used to have a popular log flume named Viking's Revenge. But after a tragic accident on a River Rapids ride at the nearby Dreamworld theme park, this ride closed in 2016. The ride is now standing but not operating just across from Storm. Thankfully, the park still had a big water ride in Storm, and it's one of SeaWorld's most visible rides. The royal blue track looks good, and the giant helix is visible from not only the entry lagoon when you enter the park, but it can be seen from the nearby waterways surrounding the park, and it looks even better when you get close to it. The entrance and exit route you past the climactic final plunge. Then you have some solid theming at points. The outdoor queue line routes you through a shipping container and past some ship wreckage. Then the final section of the queue brings you inside a dimly lit warehouse with some flashing lights, equipment, and radar sounds. This is also where the station and rides finale take place. This seemed to be the most efficient coaster at the park. While each boat holds just 8 riders maximum and 4 rows of 2, there are multiple boats on the course at once, and dispatches were at a steady rate. I think this ride's loose article policy really helps. All bags must be placed in a complimentary locker before entering the queue line. This allows guests to go directly to the boat, speeding up the restraint checks. The only thing you'll need to store on the load platform is your glasses. The ride maxed out at a 15 to 20 minute wait the day I visited SeaWorld. I've heard it can get a 45 to 60 minute wait on busier days though. On those days, there are three ways to beat the crowds. First, head to Storm Coaster early. It is one of the furthest rides from the main entrance, so not too many people are going to go there first. Second, you can use the virtual queue system. It is a free service included with your park ticket. You can reserve one ride at a time on the park app. Once your time is called, you have a half hour to return. Once you use your password expires, you can book another one, and you are free to keep booking Storm Coaster over and over if you'd so like. Return times will run out on busy days, so make sure to grab one early. Second, you can use the park's fast track skip the line system. I didn't see this advertised online, but they sold it in person. You can either purchase the full system, which gives you one-time access to all the park's major rides for roughly $100, or you can purchase single shots. The latter are pretty expensive though and cost $25 to $30 if I remember correctly. Both fast track and virtual queue have a separate line bring you right up to the load platform. There, you are assigned a row. Where you sit does not matter from a force perspective with this ride, but it is worth knowing the front row will get a bit wetter than the other seats. 
Once seated, you're restrained by individual U-shaped lap bars. These are similar to what you'll find on the other mock water coasters and they're comfortable enough. Once checked, you are dispatched to the sound of a horn. You slowly float towards the lift hill. There are some lights flashing and one display off to your left on the approach, but the best theming comes later in the ride. Once you leave the building, you climb the 92 foot or 28 meter tall lift hill. If you look to the right, you can see the aforementioned wreckage in the queue line. At the top, you level off for a few seconds, which gives you an opportunity to take in the stunning view of the Gold Coast. And that continues in the first element. You have a fairly slow 180 degree turn high above the ground. There's a small dip midway through it, but this element is all about the sight lines. After cruising through a brake run, you have a large twisting drop to the right. No force, but you build up good speed. You then twist upwards into another brake run. The turn tightens at the end, causing a moderate mix of laterals and positive Gs. The brake run is brief, and then comes the best part. You have the ride's seven-story plunge. The visuals are cool as you drop beneath the queue line some shipping containers, and you get some negative Gs as well. The plunge's profiling is a bit wonky. It takes a while to hit the max angle of descent, but once you do, you get a pop of floater airtime. You then careen over a speed hill. You have a lot of speed and some weightlessness to boot. Then you zip back into the warehouse and hit the big splashdown. This will get your upper body pretty wet, but thankfully your shoes should be spared. That is exactly what I want to see in a water ride. As you float back to the station, you pass some barrels and equipment. This is accompanied by flashing lights and some sirens whirring. You then return to the station, ending the 1,540 foot or 470 meter long coaster. Now let's talk about the smoothness and pacing. Some of these mock water coasters have a rattle on the coaster bits, but this one is very smooth even after a decade of operation. As for pacing, I wish the sequencing of the ride was a bit different. I think the ride's best theming occurs at the end. I wish this section occurred before the lift hill. I like when water rides front load the theming and build up to the big drop, but that's a personal preference. The approach SeaWorld used means you're entertained on the return to the station at least. So what would I rate the Storm Coaster? I would give this ride a 6 out of 10. This is the exact same score I gave Scatoween because I like both rides equally. The theming on the indoor bit is a nice touch. While the big helix on the coaster section is just okay and honestly feels a bit like a gimmick, the finale is great. I love the big drop in Bunny Hell. There are a few better water coasters out there, but this one offers a superior ride experience to your average log flume in my opinion. But is it better than Bermuda Triangle? While Storm Coaster is undeniably more thrilling, I would have preferred Bermuda Triangle based on how much I love Movie Park Germany's Area 51, and it seems like some locals are still bitter that this ride was removed. So those are my thoughts on Storm Coaster or SeaWorld. What are your thoughts on this water coaster? Do you think it was better than the Bermuda Triangle ride it replaced? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.